All right, what's going on guys? Today I have another fair comparison. At least I would say it's fair. We're gonna be comparing two air coolers that I liked very much. One is the $24 Scythe Bieko that I reviewed recently, and the other one is the $32 Riven Hans air cooler that I reviewed recently as well. Just a quick note, the Riven Hans on Amazon sells for about $37, and on Newegg it sells for $32. So $5 less if you want to save some. Both of these coolers are budget friendly and they both exceeded my expectations in a computer like this. There's only an $8 difference between these coolers, but one of the coolers performs a lot better than the other one in one test. There's similarities and stuff, but in one test, one outperformed the other one by a long shot. And we're gonna get into that just in a moment. So please make sure to leave a like, a comment down below and consider subscribing. Enjoy the video. Let's begin with the less expensive cooler, the Scythe Biako. The Biako has an aluminum and copper heatsink with a max height of 130 millimeters. The design of this cooler is asymmetrical, so it won't block any RAM slots. The included fan is 92 millimeters and can handle RPMs of 300 to 2300. It does come with a four pin cable. The cooler will fit in pretty much any case, so you don't have to worry about that. The Riven Hans, on the other hand, costs $32 on Newegg and $37 on Amazon, like I said. This heatsink is also composed of aluminum and copper. It also has an asymmetrical design, but the max height of the cooler is 155 millimeters as opposed to 130 from the Biako. The fan is also bigger at 120 millimeters and has speeds from 300 to 1500. The speeds may not go as high as the Biako's fan, but this one is bigger, so the size makes up for it. It also connects with a 4-pin cable, and as you probably noticed, the fan is yellow. I'll talk about that in a moment. Like I said earlier, both fans impressed me with the temperatures they achieved inside of this PC. Before we go over some temperatures, here are my PC specifications on screen. Once again, let's begin with the Biako. With nothing running in the background, the Biako's idle temperature was 40 degrees Celsius. While running Unigen Heaven, the average temperature was about 60 degrees Celsius, and the highest was 81. By the way, all these temperatures are in Celsius. While playing Ghost Recon Wildlands in Full HD with max settings, the average was 66 and the highest was 72. The test went a lot better than I had anticipated. While running Cinebench, the average temperature was 76 and the highest was 81. This is where the numbers get scary. While rendering a Full HD video on Adobe Premiere Elements 15, the temperatures hit 90 degrees Celsius. A Full HD video, 90 degrees Celsius. Keep that in mind. That's a scary number. I didn't try rendering in 4K because that would have probably blue screened my computer. I know some of these temperatures were a bit high, but it's a $24 cooler that's not meant for a $1,500 computer. This will be just fine in a $500 to $600 computer or something similar. Now the Riven Hans, one of my favorite coolers at the moment. Idle temperatures on the Hans were about 36 degrees Celsius. Unigen Heaven's highest temperature was only 68. Ghost Recon's temperature was 68 on average and 78 at its highest. Okay, so far not the best, but just wait. Cinebench's temperatures were 71 at the highest. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. While editing videos, the temperature was around the 60s most of the time, low 60s. Many times they were below that, but while rendering a video in full HD, the highest was only 76. This is where the Biako hit 90. So with the Hans, I tested it while rendering a video in 4K because I thought it could handle it. The highest temperature was only 77. Keep in mind that this editing software, Adobe Premiere Elements 15, only uses the processor to do all the work. There's no GPU acceleration or anything like that, so the CPU is heavily stressed and gets really hot. I've used coolers more than two times the price of the Hans that performed a lot worse. Now both of these coolers were not a pain to install. The Biako was really straightforward, just to line the four pins and there. The Hans was a bit more sophisticated, but nothing to stress about, just follow instructions. Both of these coolers also look pretty attractive in my opinion. I do wish the Biako's fan had a black cable and not the mustard color one. This cooler is probably gonna look a lot better than other components if it's going inside a budget build anyway, so I guess it's not bad. The Hans looks great. Even the Reven's bronzing on the surface fits in well, I think. It has a yellow fan, which might not fit in all systems. I thought it wouldn't fit in well here, but it actually looks really good. If you already have other RGB components, like a light strip, you can really make the fan look even better. For example, when I have the RGB strip on red, the fan looks like it's glowing, and it doesn't even look yellow depending on the color. In my opinion, the Riven Hans is the ultimate budget cooler. For it to handle 4K rendering and not even hit 80 degrees Celsius, it's very impressive. 
and keep in mind that it's really hot where I live and there's no air conditioning in the room, so you know that could play a huge role in the tests. And this cooler still held up strong. You can even add another 120mm static pressure fan on the other side to get even better temperatures. So to conclude this video, the Reven Hans, in my opinion, is the best budget air cooler that I've tried. I know there's a ton of them out there, but the, from the ones that I've tried, the Reven Hans blows out the competition. The Scythe Biaco is still a very good cooler for like a $500, $600 system. If it could handle the temperatures from this PC, of course it's going to be able to handle the temperatures from a you know more budget friendly PC. And it's a great cooler to replace the stock Intel cooler or stock AMD cooler that comes with a CPU. Those don't really work that well. I know the Reven Hans performed well, but I still wouldn't recommend overclocking while using that cooler or any of these, simply because they're air coolers and their budget air coolers, so they're probably not going to be able to handle the high temperatures. For that, you would need, you know, a more expensive liquid cooler, probably. Anyway, that's it for this video. Please make sure to leave a like, a comment down below, and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.